Hello there. In this tutorial, I'll be formulating a linear programming model for this investment problem. XYZ Trust has to invest 8 million in petroleum, stocks, gold, and real estate. Given these projected rates of return, these risk factors, and subject to these guidelines. The question is, how much should XYZ invest in each of these alternatives in order to maximize dollar return on investment. Let's begin by defining the decision variables. Since return on investment depends on how much is invested in each alternative, we can define the decision variables as follows. Let P equal the amount to invest in petroleum, S the amount to invest in stocks, G the amount in gold, and R the amount in real estate. Note here that it will be insufficient to simply say let P equal petroleum. What about petroleum does P actually represent? Does it represent the number of barrels of petroleum or the cost per barrel of petroleum or the risk associated with petroleum or the return on investment in petroleum? We need to clearly specify the units. Next, we state the objective function. Since return on investment is clearly the product of the rate of return and the amount invested, we can state the objective as follows. Maximize 0.14p plus 0.16s and so on. For the constraints, let's first write one for the total investment. Since P, S, G, and R represent the amount to invest in these alternatives, we can write P plus S plus G plus R equals 8 million. We use equality here because we assume the trust is going to invest the entire 8 million. If the 8 million is a budget that may not be fully exhausted, we could use a less than or equal sign instead. For part A of the guidelines, no single investment alternative should account for more than 40% of budget. So for petroleum, we can write P is less than or equal to 0.4 times P plus S plus G plus R since this is total investment. If total investment does not have to equal 8 million, we might have to leave this as is. But since P plus S plus G plus R equals 8 million, we can simply replace this by 0.4 times 8 million, which we can rewrite as P less than or equal to 3.2 million. We do the same for stocks, for gold, and for real estate. Note that I did not just write one line for these four constraints as depicted here. You might understand what it means, but most software for solving LPs usually don't. And because these are four distinct constraints, we usually state them individually. For B, the amount invested in gold and real estate combined must be at least twice that invested in petroleum. And we write G plus R greater or equal to 2P, with G plus R representing gold and real estate combined, and greater than or equal to representing at least, and 2P representing twice the amount in petroleum. This is rewritten as G plus R minus 2P greater or equal to 0. The requirement in C states that the risk associated with stocks should not exceed twice the risk associated with real estate. And we write... 7s less than or equal to 2 times 3r because the risk associated with stocks is 7 and that for real estate is 3. And that can be rewritten as 7x minus 6r less than or equal to 0. For D, investment in real estate should exceed investment in stocks by no more than 1 million. So we write r less than or equal to s plus 1 million, which basically means that the difference between r and s has to be less than or equal to 1 million. For part E, the average risk factor should be no more than 5. Since the risk factors are 5, 7, 3, and 2, we can begin by writing 5P plus 7S plus 2G plus 3R. A common error here is the tendency to want to divide this sum by 4 because an average is required, but that would be incorrect. What we need here is actually a weighted average with the weights being the investment amounts. So instead, we divide by total investment and state that the average should be less than or equal to 5. We can then cross multiply the denominator and change the right side to a numerical value. To finish up, we just add the non-negativity constraints. And that concludes the LP formulation. Thanks for watching.